And uh, now David has this situation with Tamar. So let's read 2 Samuel 13. I'm going to be reading from the, uh, c- c- the complete Jewish Bible. I'm actually, though, I will pronounce the words that we're used to and not the way they're written in that Bible. So it may vary a little bit from, from, uh, from the one if you're following along in your version. But 2 Samuel 13. Now Absalom, the son of David, had a beautiful sister named Tamar. Sometime after the previous events, Amnon, the son of David, fell in love with her. Amnon became so obsessed with his sister that he became ill. For she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it would be po- impossible to approach her. But Amnon had a friend named Jonathan, the son of Shimei, David's brother. And Jonathan was a very shrewd fellow. He asked him, Why, son of the king, are you growing thinner every day? Won't you tell me? Amnon answered him, I'm in love with Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Jonathan said to him, Lie down on your bed and pretend you're sick. When your father comes to see you, say to him, Please let my sister Tamar come and give me food to eat and have her prepare the food where I can watch. I'll eat what she serves me. So Amnon lay down and pretended he was sick. When the king came to see him, Amnon said to the king, Please let my sister Tamar come and make me a couple of cakes here where I can watch, and I'll eat what she serves me. David sent this instruction home to Tamar. Go now to your brother Amnon's house and prepare him some food. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house. He was lying down. She took dough, kneaded it, made some cakes while he watched, and baked the cakes. Then she took the pan and turned them out in front of him, but he refused to eat. Amnon said, Have everyone leave me. And everyone left him. Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food into the room so that I can have you serve me. Tamar took the cakes she had made and brought them into the room to Amnon, her brother. But when she brought them near so that he could eat, he grabbed her and said to her, Come to bed with me, my sister. No, my brother, she answered him. Don't force me. Things like this aren't done in Israel. Don't behave so disgracefully. Where could I go with such shame? And as for you, you will be regarded as one of Israel's vulgar brutes. Now, therefore, please, speak to the king, because he won't keep me from you. However, he wouldn't listen to her, and since he was stronger than she, he overpowered her and raped her. But then he was filled with utter revulsion for her. His hatred of her was even greater than the love he'd had before. Amnon said to her, Get up and get out of here. No, she objected. Because throwing me out like this is an even worse thing than what you've already done to me. But he wouldn't listen to her. He called his personal servant and said, Get rid of this woman from me. Throw her out and lock the door after her. She was wearing a long sleeve robe. That was how they used to dress the king's daughters, who were virgins. His servant took her out and locked the door after her. Tamar put ashes on her head, tore her long sleeve robe that she was wearing, laid her hand on her head and went off crying aloud as she went. Absalom, her brother, said to her, Has Amnon, your brother, been with you? But now, my sister, keep quiet, because he's your brother. Don't take the matter to heart. But Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. When King David heard about all these things, he became very angry. As for Absalom, he refused to say a word to Amnon, either good or bad. For Absalom hated Amnon for having raped his sister Tamar. But then, Jonathan, the son of Shimei, this is down in verse 52, or 32, spoke to him and said, My lord shouldn't think they have killed all young men, the king's sons. Only Amnon is dead. For Absalom has meant to do this ever since the day he raped his sister Tamar. This is a fairly dramatic and emotional story that we're given. Now, in our last time we talked, we looked at becoming a victim or a victor. When something devastating happens to you, you have the opportunity. You can be the victim, or you can rise above it and be the victor. Unfortunately, as far as we know, Tamar became the victim. She was deceived and assaulted by her brother. She was abandoned by her father. 
No attempt to redeem her was made or to, so that she could then return to a normal life. She was hidden in her room. Tamar felt alone, abandoned, helpless, and hopeless. It's a sad and tragic story, unique in the Bible, but not unique to us today. Today, we would describe that as sexual assault, rape. There was domestic violence, and there was domestic abuse. The domestic abuse was by the father. The father knew what happened, and he got mad. That's it. He got mad. Where was... What did he do to Amnon? Nothing. What did he do for, for Tamar? To restore her. Because now she was defiled. She was now a defiled woman. There was a certain process that they could go through to reclaim that and to wipe away that defilement. Nothing was done. I wanted to share because three situations that's happened in my life. Because many times as preachers, we tell stories of other people. And we read stories out of the Bible. But I want to share three stories that's happened in my family that has situations to do with this domestic violence, domestic abuse, and even sexual assault. I have an aunt. Her name was Carrie. She was married to a man named Garfield. He was a mean man. He would occasionally hit her. That wasn't the worst. When he was angry with her and he had to leave the house, he had padlocks on the outside doors. So he would lock the doors from the outside with the padlocks. He had nailed all the windows in the house shut. So she was basically a prisoner when he left. That's if she, he got her upset. If he made her very angry, if she made him very angry, she, he had a closet that had a padlock on it. And he would put her in the closet and lock that padlock until he came back. To see this as a, as a child didn't make... We, we saw the padlocks on the doors. We saw the nail. We saw the windows nailed shut. They didn't mean much to us as children. But as we became adults, it became, it became, it became abhorrent. That we would have a man who would go to church on Sundays and do this during the week. I like to think my family is fairly normal. And then when I look at these three examples from my family, I think, well, if this is normal, then we're in sad shape. My older sister. And by the way, all the people I'm talking about except one have already passed away in uh, these stories. But my older sister was abused by my father. It was her stepfather. And he abused her. Now, my Aunt Carrie was a victim all her life. She gave in, succumbed, and lived under that cruelty her entire life. My sister Jackie decided she wasn't going to live under that, so she took off. At 15 years old, she got married. But it took her until she was in her 40s nearly 40 years for her to quit being a victim. She married four guys, four, three breakups, a visit to a mental hospital, tried the wild living, tried this. But finally, she was able to quit being the victim. She met a man, a quiet man, a gentleman, 
who just accepted her. Didn't try to mold her. Didn't try to take it. Just let Jackie be Jackie. Jackie became a victor. She went to heaven as a victor. Not as a victim. My first wife. We'd been married nearly 20 years. She sat down with me one day and said, you know, when I was young, I was abused by my father. Now, my wife could have chosen to be a victim. She didn't. She became a victor. She forgave her father. Actually was able to develop a a positive, healthy relationship with him as an adult. I'm telling you these stories to show you that these happened. But you don't have to be a victim when bad things happen, when cruel things happen. You don't have to be the victim. You're going to be victimized, but you don't have to be the victim. The odds are that in this congregation, right now, there are those who have suffered from domestic abuse, domestic violence, sexual assault, or rape. And there may even be some enduring it now. From my limited experience in this area of other people, because I've, I've known others who had these same events happen with them, that if you wanted to take advantage of a woman and be this way, then the best thing to do is get a Christian woman. Because a Christian woman seems to keep it quiet and more silent than a woman of the world. Because she's to be in submission to her husband. She doesn't want to embarrass the family. It must be something she's done. And in regards to that, when I was doing research for this sermon, I found an interesting article on uh, think, think, thinkingofgod.org by Mark Powell. I want to read that for us real quick. The ninth and final aspect has to do with who Christians perceive themselves to actually be. Rather than identify as victims, no matter what they have gone through, followers of Jesus see themselves as being mysteriously united with, with and wonderfully connected to Christ. It's hard to really overemphasize how important this final aspect of being in Christ is, especially for those who have suffered the devastating effects of domestic violence. For one is not defined by their abuser, but by their Savior. You see, when we identify as a victim, even then our own sinfulness swamps all the sin perpetrated against us. Having that dealt with by a living Savior and finding a new and improved identity as someone reconciled to God raises us out of the poverty of our own victimhood. Following on from this, husbands and wives in particular that are called to relate to one another now in exactly the same way that Jesus relates to his bride, the church. He's saying, where do you put, where do you look for? When you're involved in this situation, what is the solution? What is the answer? Where do you go? That's why I said these songs that we were singing are telling us where to go, who to seek out. And I'm going to spend the rest of my time in this lesson before my minute of closing. Just listening to God. I have listed the scriptures I'm going to be reading in the, in the handout. I'm not going to announce the, the, the scripture I'm reading. I will pause a couple of seconds between uh, each reading of the scripture. But if you need healing today, if you need forgiveness, if you need strength, if you need courage, if you need help of any kind, Take solace in these words that we're going to hear from God. If you need forgiveness, if you need help, if you need counseling, may these scriptures give you courage to address the issue as we read these words. For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life and I would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my supplications. Because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore I shall call upon him as long as I live. The cords of death encompassed me and the terrors of Sheol came upon me. I found distress and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is compassionate. The Lord preserves the simple. He was brought low and he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have rescued my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I am in my alarm. I said in my alarm, all men are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I shall lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I shall pay my vows to the Lord. Oh, may it be in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his godly ones. O Lord, surely I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you I shall offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I shall pay my vows to the Lord. O may it be in the presence of all his people, in the court of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great, for in the, name, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you live also. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. For my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Those words bring comfort to my soul. When I'm in trouble, when I have fallen, when I'm hurting, that's when Jesus wants to be closest to you. Don't be a victim. Don't turn away God. Accept him. Bring him in. Do you realize when David wrote some of those psalms, he was on the run from Saul for about 12 years. He had turmoil in his own kingdom and with his children and with his enemies for nearly 20 of his 40 years of reign. But yet, during the midst of that, David could write the 23rd Psalm. He could write the 116th Psalm because he turned it to God. His heart went to God. Please, don't be a victim. Be a victor. Show the world who you are because you are a child of the Most High. And nothing, nothing in this world can defeat you unless you let it. Don't let the world win. Let God win. He will get you through any situation you're in. Trust Him. And I can't tell you how He's going to get you through it. It may be through another person. It may through a, be a, just a song. It could be a verse you read in the Bible. But he will get you through it. And he will show you the way to go. Now, to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen.